So let's start, Nikhil. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, just let me <laughs> start it, set the tone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, participants all across the world. Uh, I, on the behalf, I'm Sandeep Ankhade, on the behalf of uh, TRIZ Association of Asia and AISSMS College of Engineering, welcome you all to this uh, chapter 17 of TRIZ Talks. And uh, today we have a very young personality with us, uh, Mr. Nikhil Fadnis, very soon, who will be Dr. Nikhil Fadnis. And uh, he is uh, like as displayed on the screen itself is a Thriz practitioner and uh, he's uh, practicing Thriz uh, since long, maybe since his uh, childhood. And uh, he is a Thriz level three from Matris and uh, he's uh, like pursuing his PhD at uh, Finland and he's also working as a junior engineer. And since he has joined his masters, he is executing projects and these projects are those which are sponsored by industry. So not taking much of the time, uh, Nikhil, I would hand over the stage to you and uh, please proceed with this, today's Thrace Talks. Thank you very much. So uh, my name is Nikhil, again, a short brief intro and uh, I came into touch with Threes as a method through one of my mentors. Uh, Shri Fatness. Uh, in grade nine, I believe I got my uh, level one certification, which was amazing. It's technically a degree. Uh, and then in 2014, I was certified as perhaps one of the world's youngest uh, level three practitioners. Uh, during that period of time, uh, I was also in engineering college and we, we did some projects using threes, which also won an award in the university for the top three projects uh, for engineering institutions in India. Uh, and then in 2018, 2019, roughly, I decided to pursue my master's degree here in Finland because uh, Finland is very well known for its education structure, specifically in, uh, in the primary uh, schools and the secondary schools. Uh, it's even today, uh, if, if you actually check the, the, the web pages and the world economic forums, Finland ranks as number one on the education aspect of it. Uh, not to mention it's also the happiest country in the world. And I, I wonder why. So, uh, that being said, I did pursue my masters, uh, in innovation and technology, which is a specific course where, uh, innovation is taught for two years straight. And we learn about different innovation techniques and threes is one of them and which used to be compulsory uh, in, in 2019. So, um, I am a mechanical engineer and then I, I pursued uh, technology and innovation management uh, and post which currently I am pursuing my doctoral degree here at Lute University uh, in an area which is threes related and innovation management related and kind of a mixture of, of the two. So it's something to do with innovation portfolio analysis. Uh, and my research and specialization is mostly to develop a process to create product portfolios uh, from a threes perspective. Uh, and while while using some of the other techniques uh, in the world that are, that are used by corporates and, and practitioners, for example, outcome driven innovation or jobs to be done if, if you've ever heard of it. So that's what I've been currently working on. I, I publish research papers. You should be able to find me at least four of them by now. And um, ever since I came into uh, Lute University, that's the first time I experienced threes in, in a university. Uh, relatively, I would still say that threes is not taught in all the universities in the world as let's say compared to some other methods like design thinking, uh, which almost in every single university you would find something on design thinking today, pretty much. Uh, but very, very few universities actually have a full fledged course on threes, uh, which is in house and not a part of a project where there is some faculty uh, who, who's certified, who's done projects and, and who teaches threes. Uh, at a master's level. And therefore, uh, in, in 2020, when, when I saw that, okay, there is perhaps a course in, in Lute University, I should probably take it. That's where I came across this concept of challenge-based learning and the framework. So today's session would be more about 
uh, what I saw as the difference between a corporate training method, which is which typically is happening in a lot of uh, industries, because we also have trainings in the industry, versus what happens when professors teach students at a, at a master's degree, and what's the uh, let's say drawbacks, the advantages that that I saw from at least behind the wall, because of course I don't teach threes here yet. Uh, there are far qualified professors. Professor Chachurin here uh, teaches threes from the last ten years or so. Uh, uh, Professor Leonid Chechurin, if you are not aware of him, uh, he was also a former uh, Gen 3's uh, professional and then later on he decided to pursue his career uh, in academia. So he's the one who primarily uh, teaches the course and is the responsible professor. And that's where we learned that, okay, uh, Let's see how how three is starting universities, and that's where I I got perhaps my first projects with a mattress company, and then uh, I was a little bit in shock because uh, I've never seen universities actively look out for for partnerships and uh, doing real projects uh, in, in a course. So today we are going to be talking a little bit about what this framework is and uh, how is three as of now taught. Uh, in Newt University and some of the pros and cons and the, the experience that I've had, uh, so on. So uh, as of today, let's say as of 2023, uh, threes is uh, still taught today and it will, in fact, it will start in uh, the month of January and it typically ends in April. So it's a four month course. And uh, if, if you guys are uh, not familiar with what I mean by challenge based learning, it's really simple. Uh, there are no exams or very few exams uh, in Lute University, at least in the GMIT program, which stands for Global Management of Innovation and Technology, uh, where you, you get your Masters of Science in Technology as a degree. And at least 50% of your courses here uh, have a real project with a real company uh, that is given to you as an assignment. They are not dummy projects. Uh, but somebody would be appointed from a company uh, and they will allocate a project to a team. So you have a challenge sponsor and a professor basically who agree upon uh, some sort of a scope of a project. It might be any type of a project uh, that you typically do in corporates, which can be new product development, reduction of cost, uh, finding emerging trends in a certain application area where, where the company wants to invest in. Sometimes managerial problems, sometimes to do with IP and intellectual property exploitation and how they can monetize their IP that's just been there with them for, for years. So different types of innovation projects are taken up as um, uh, an assignment and given to students. Now. Uh, the way this works is uh, quite simple. Uh, we don't really pay anything to to these uh, uh, challenge sponsors uh, or companies, so called. Uh, but basically, they they work uh, on a very simple principle of open innovation, where uh, crowdsourcing uh, is is their idea. So when they run out of ideas and they need some external inspiration to to get things moving inside the company. They come to us and they say that, hey, we have a project. Are you interested? And then we kind of tailor make uh, a project from the company so that the students would understand it. Of course, we cannot straight away build rocket engines or, or anything like that. But at least uh, we try and take up some projects from these uh, companies that that at least fit in the scope and the knowledge scope and the time related scopes of uh, the university timelines because of course some projects can be big and that's just too unreasonable so that's pretty much uh, what it is and there's some benefits to the companies as well uh, collaborations that can create new ideas cheaper to hire knowledge from universities because this is a way for students to prove their uh, skill a lot of times what's happened is because of these projects uh, some students were offered a job straight away in the company in, in a certain team to, to develop this idea forward or to take it forward. And uh, a lot of times people were very happy and it creates potential employment opportunities for a student to 
uh, make himself remembered in the company representative's mind. And of course, for the companies, it, it just reduces some research and development time as well. So how does it actually work? Uh, typically, uh, it has been implemented in two of the programs so far, uh, or maybe even more, even in the engineering side of things. But currently, I'm going to be talking about a master's program for innovation, where we have the system running for the last six, seven years now, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so basically, there is a discussion between professors and the companies to align the course objective with the challenge. And the challenge is the, the project that the university has to give. Uh, then you have about three to five companies. So we, we're not just talking about one company, but we are talking about three or five different companies that try and make a pitch of their challenge. And it's a challenge. It's not a project uh, only because you are free to pursue however and whichever directions, methodologies, uh, data, anything, anything uh, to address the challenge. So we do not force them that, hey, you must do this and you must apply this method and you must do this in order to get the result. They are free to use anything that they've learned. So they make a pitch to the students on the first day or they'll say the second day. After that, every student out of the three or five pitches, so there are different types of companies and different types of challenges, the student is allowed to select one of these challenges of his or her liking. And basically, uh, students automatically get grouped together, usually in groups of uh, four or perhaps five, uh, based on what you select as a challenge. And that means that you all wish to solve the same challenge. So it kind of aligns with, with everybody's uh, goals. Post which, uh, just like a real project, we, we, we kind of kick off a DGS, a data gathering session to clarify the scope, the objectives, define the constraints, what's expected from the challenge, what do you need? Do you need a prototype? Do you need a design? Do you need a concept? Do you just need ideas, uh, et cetera, et cetera? What have you already tried? All of these things. Then typically, uh, just like a stage gate process in, in companies where um, after a certain point, you need to report your findings to the um, senior management. The same thing works here as well. Students will present their finding at each stage and I will also kind of present how it happens and the timelines of how it's executed here in Loot. And the company gives you feedback. And the typical project uh, is completed within uh, six to 12 weeks. But here is the trick. The true value of the project uh, or how much the student can apply a particular methodology comes from the client. So the client tells us if he's happy with the solutions that he's got and if he is happy with the output and he, it, if it really creates value for him, uh, then he gives a good grade and we influence no part of it. So the client, uh, as long as he's happy, his satisfaction equals you did well. If he's not happy, then definitely you've not done something uh, well enough or something is inadequate. So I, I believe that's the main point of it where your customer will grade you on what you've done exactly as, as, as a real, I mean, that's the, that's the hard and true fact where, um, Customers are the only people we listen to and we need to somehow satisfy their needs. If he's satisfied, you automatically get a good grade uh, for students. So that's how it works typically. Now, this kind of a structure uh, has been taught uh, and is still taught uh, by Professor Cheshurin. And once again, I would mention that uh, he used to be a Gen 3 employee. Uh, and then later on, he switched to academia and he's been successfully running the three scores very well in different formats, even in forms of uh, uh, digital creativity uh, and digital media and modes of operation uh, in Lute University. Uh, and that's how it usually uh, works. So we have two weeks or three-ish weeks of the analysis and problem identification phases. We have some form of uh, problem solving and idea generation phases. Uh, and then we have some sort of preliminary and substantiation and some, some reports. So all in all, it's six to 12 weeks. Again, it depends on uh, how many credits the course is. 
but usually it runs for four months. Uh, sometimes it runs even more, so that's two semesters. So it's January to April, and then the project can maybe get continued until even May or June sometimes. But yeah, so it's it's quite intensive, and that's the first time that I took up uh, this course as a student, and I saw some some perceptions of students about threes and and the way uh, it works and their mentality it it works behind the scenes. And that's what I'd like to share because it's very, very different from the corporate side of things. So what type of projects do we typically get from, from clients? Uh, again, it depends on the course. And um, this is the type of project that we've been taking so far uh, in trees and open innovation. So I'm the official responsible teacher for open and collaborative innovation here uh, at Ulut University since the past one and a half, two years now. And uh, we have different type of projects and we have also implemented this challenge based framework uh, that I saw in threes and kind of uh, applied it a little bit to, to open innovation and it's been working fabulously well. So the type of projects that we have taken is this was some of my personal uh, projects. The first one was a new product development project for a mattress company where they wanted to develop a new system for detection of uh, wear levels of the mattress. So it the mattress must inform the human being how, how old it is uh, in real time, if possible. And um, the next type of projects were adjacent market identifications where the client comes and tells us that, uh, hey, we have um, certain types of uh, products and we, we want to monetize them further. And could you please find us this where can this technology be applicable and this this was done for a power to gas company uh, we had typical projects of hey we want more features in our product so increasing functions there was cost and plastic reduction projects for medical companies and large medical companies uh, such as baxter uh, and even metal toledo so uh, there was innovation strategy development projects now while strategy development is not really a part of threes at all uh, it was in the, the open innovation uh, course of things, uh, but uh, it was connected to three somehow. And then some somewhere we also had new service development uh, type of projects. So we had a wide variety of projects. And uh, that's, that's all that I have for slides. Uh, rest of it, I'm just going to be very informal about it. So the first thing that we typically notice when, when it comes to projects uh, as a whole. Uh, in the corporate world, it works differently. And in education sectors, it works a little differently. And the first most obvious finding that, that we had, I believe even corporates uh, in this case is a similarity. Both sides say that threes is too time consuming. And it's too much of an effort. And I completely agree. And from student perspective, uh, it's understandable because Threes is not the only course that they are supposed to take. They are supposed to take quite a lot of uh, different types of courses. Uh, and sometimes it's just too heavy for them to handle the, the effort that goes behind a full-fledged Threes project. And in corporates, I believe it's the same because it is too time consuming. But at the same time, we, 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 we do not see the value that it creates as compared to, let's say, the other methodologies. That's why you use Threes. If you could solve a problem without using threes, please, please go ahead. But if something perhaps was unsolvable or was too difficult or was giving solutions that were just not uh, enough, then perhaps we, we go to threes. So that's the first thing that we saw. In terms of the content of the course, there was also a big uh, difference. You see, in typical um, level one syllabus of threes, uh, for corporate trainings, we, we usually cover some history of threes, where it came from. We cover the most critical things, which is the analytical tools of threes, uh, function analysis, cause and effect chain analysis, trimming, contradiction analysis, and that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, usual trainings for level one are three days, maybe even five days, depending upon the client's timings. But that's pretty much it. You You really don't train for, if I'm not wrong, more than 888, that's around 30 hours of training is, is what you are given. But 
in the universities this kind of training is much longer just because you have a little bit more time so as i said the course runs from somewhere in the middle of january until the end of april including the project however the project only begins after half of the tools or threes have been covered so it just starts with the basics then they spend more time on function analysis then there would be a little bit more practice on function analysis on uh, dummy problems uh, then a little bit more practice on trimming then a little bit more practice on uh, some of the other uh, aspects like contradiction analysis until let's say february and then the projects begin so students do get more time to at least understand the concept of threes but somewhere at the end of it uh, at least when i was learning it uh, it's impossible to get to the depths of level one knowledge itself uh, and that's something that I experienced. So I would say it this way, even in higher education, it's easy to learn threes, but you still don't have enough time to practice threes so that the outcome of the course is going to be, oh my God, you're, you're so good. So that's absolutely not there. So I would still call it as a good awareness and introduction to level one, where you're briefly introduced to each tool that is used in the analysis phases, the idea generation phases, uh, and the substantiation phases. And you try and apply them as best as possible. And I believe that's that's a good, let's say, start. Uh, apart from that, we also kind of had a system in the open innovation course, which is actually the main difference in corporate as well as higher education. Uh, in the corporate training, especially for those that last for just three days, you do not have a mentor nonstop. We do not have any sort of mentoring. Uh, but in a higher education, uh, whenever we allocate projects to students, you will be assigned one mentor uh, from either the professor's team or me or, or somebody else who is an expert uh, or specializes in threes to guide the students in the correct direction. So at each stage of the project, if he or she feels stuck with their projects and says, okay, we don't know how to build a function model, could you please help? And uh, immediately there would be kind of a, a, a mutual agreement, a call where there would be a one-to-one -one session with the team performing the project and we would help them out personally uh, in, in this kind of format. So it's a project plus training based format uh, along with some personal mentorship that you get on threes in higher educations versus in corporate, sometimes it's just completely absent because in three days, uh, it's a lot of bombardment of knowledge and the application of threes is just questionable sometimes. Then uh, we also have some interesting student related factors. You see, just like corporates and students, both of them have psychological inertia. And sometimes, in fact, most of the times, whenever students have gotten a bad grade in, in the threes course, it is mainly because of one reason. They try to produce the ideas first and then they try to apply the method just to prove where it came from. And unfortunately, it doesn't work because we are pretty good at catching all these mistakes that you have not even applied the correct function. How could you get this idea? It's, it's impossible. And given the rise of the artificial intelligence GPT based tools, uh, it's even more likely to happen because it just gi directly gives you ideas. And that's why there is a system where around 20 or let's say 50 ish percent of the grade comes from the project. However, the professor will also assess you on how well did you apply the methodology of threes to the project separately. So there is if 50% of the grade uh, is, is coming from the entire project, 25% will now come from the client and then 25% will only be based on how well did you apply threes systematically? How well were your functions drafted? Uh, did you apply the trimming rules correctly? Did you uh, have multiple ideas for the same contradiction? Did you apply the matrix correctly? Did you draft different physical contradictions using resources? Uh, so on and so forth. So 
we added up this methodological part and immediately everybody started, um, at least in, in my group, uh, at that time I, I got the full grade, but a lot of students just uh, got really bad grades because they tried to cheat the system, I would say, just put the idea first and then try to backtrack it to threes. And that's unfortunately just not how it works. Uh, recently, given the rise of the, the GPT technologies, uh, some students also, even in my course in open innovation, have tried to use uh, chat GPT and, and trying to put these threes functions and threes models and getting ideas and we could immediately catch them. I mean, it just gives traditional answers and threes is about non-typical answers, something different. So that's another thing that we experienced. Uh, apart from that, we've also had a very interesting look into the way skills are developed in the corporate setting because I've been attending a lot of corporate trainings and uh, even as an audience and also doing training, um, we've seen at least one or two differences. On the corporate side of things, there is a pressure of time because you need to deliver results and somewhere because of this incentive based corporate system, everybody feels compelled to do something. It's kind of a compulsion that, oh my God, I need to do this and I need to show the HR some result and therefore I would get, I don't know, a raise or something like that. So it's, it's not self-motivated half of the times. It's just because the company is doing it and I have been selected for a training and we are supposed to do it. So the choice of choosing threes is a little, um, let's say, unjustified or, or it needs to be a little clear sometimes. Sometimes yes and sometimes no. However, in Lute University, it works a little differently. Uh, students are not compelled to come to the threes course. It is not a compulsory course. It's an optional course that is run on the name of uh, Inventive Product Design and Advanced Threes. And there is one course on artificial inventiveness. So these are names that are used to first attract the students to the concept of threes. So we have kind of three, three kind of variations of threes. Um, the first one is called artificial inventiveness, which is a small one credit summer school kind of course uh, that runs. And that's just giving the introduction to, to innovation, idea generation, how it happens, what kind of tools we are using. And uh, we start implanting the idea that, hey, there is something called threes that exists. And I believe that was done on purpose because most students here perhaps are not aware of these at all. However, when you hear the word artificial inventiveness, it suddenly triggers, oh yeah, something cool. So students start at least uh, selecting this subject. And then, then you have the advanced part of threes. Now the advanced part of threes, uh, which is called inventive product design and advanced threes also covers the same level one uh, syllabus uh, and a little bit of some extras. Uh, for example, axiomatic design is covered in threes. Uh, there is a little bit on IP and IP strategy. So how, how can we circumvent a patent uh, if we have so kind of design for patentability. We have a little bit on design for manufacturing and assembly. So uh, a little bit on Six Sigma related tools. So it's it's a great experience for a student to have uh, the entire kind of process uh, for right from the start of the problem to the implementation phases of, of the problem. And because it's impossible for threes to just, okay, wow, we've got ideas and uh, problem solved and we just give it to the company. But what happens if you're on the implementation side and students are blank? So it's important for them to at least understand that, hey, Threes just gives you a concept, but after that, it is still your technical skills, your uh, uh, Six Sigma perhaps optimization skills, axiomatic design and the other things that start coming into picture. How do we manufacture it and therefore secondary problems. Unfortunately, uh, not a single course uh, in this university at least covers substance field analysis, which is part of a level two training and arrays. Uh, it, does not directly cover them and not even process function analysis. So therefore, uh, a lot of the times we are not taking any sort of projects from companies which are manufacturing process improvement 
uh, related projects um because it's just difficult for them uh another big difference in corporates versus um in higher education for masters levels are availability of data because threes is a very engineering related topic now this is what we're talking about because innovation management and tech technology is overlapping with industrial engineering as as the field uh in Ute university you can come from a business side or you can come from an engineering domain uh both of which in engineering and business are a little different and the business people or at least business students are unable to grasp the the threes part completely because they are purely from a business format and unfortunately you do require some sort of science and engineering related knowledge for threes to work uh therefore business threes is not covered at all uh it's only engineering related threes and to add to these problems because unfortunately you don't know what kind of student would be sitting in the class in front of you he might be from a business background but he's taken the course and he must solve a technical problem uh, it's quite challenging on the other hand the, the problem is also from the companies because they do not give us enough information to work with uh, in higher education it's all about okay we have a non-disclosure agreement and we all know that for a good function model we at least need to know the components uh, some diagrams how it works the different working conditions of the product where it's used what 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 some problems uh, what are some of the problems that they have at what frequency do they occur everything but the companies don't share all of this but in corporate it's different you know everything inside out about the product so i think this is a big let's say difference uh, in the corporate side because at least they have access to the information and half of the time we are struggling and asking too many questions and a lot of discussions just go on okay where do we start the function model so that's something that has also uh, uh, happened but yeah apart from that what kind of an effect has it uh, had so far in the learning skill set well i'm glad to report that quite a lot of students that take the three scores also perform well in some of the other courses such as open innovation so i personally teach open innovation and we also have the same challenge based system in fact we recently completed three projects for nestle uh, on the emerging trends of food uh, one project for Baxter for for one of their IV bags and uh, one project for Huawei, uh, the phone company for quick apps and mini apps. And uh, all three of them were pleasantly surprised to have the results. And in fact, some of the results are also published online, uh, I believe on Huawei's uh, web pages, where it was an open source uh, project that they had given us and they were very happy with the applications that students found and some of them used some knowledge from threes uh, into all of the other courses so i'm very happy that as a skill set because a skill can only be be developed if you practice it enough the ability to apply it in different domains and just to try it out by yourself if it works if it doesn't work uh, is important no matter if you're doing it correctly or wrongly i mean that's a different question but at least having the courage to try out threes in some other course itself is is a big achievement because half of the time three is only related to oh yeah my my course is done i've got the credits let's just forget it and uh, that just doesn't work unfortunately so i'm very glad to report that we have seen some some cross course uh, knowledge transfer that that's been happening in in threes apart from that we've also had a lot of master's thesis on threes uh, my own master's thesis was on uh, threes and open innovation and a combination of both of them. Uh, it, it is now called as quantum economic analysis, QEA. Uh, and it's kind of a modern threes slash exclusive Gen 3 tool, uh, which is used in projects. So we've also had quite an interesting rise of digital creativity and threes research in our university, uh, at least to do with how can the software invent all by itself or how how can we call something creative uh, uh when, when a software let's say does something so professor chachurin's area is is digital creativity and and a lot of digital uh threes 
so i would leave that perhaps to him some some other day but um, yeah that's pretty much it so so far we have been doing um, uh, almost one two three four these are just some of the companies that we've listed some big ones right from the shipping industry all the way to additives and family based companies and then some fortune 500 companies uh, that are being aware about this uh, and in general the reception of of threes as a method to be applied to their projects is not neglected so i am just glad to report that in in europe uh, specifically the most of the managers when they hear threes or perhaps in india they would just completely reject it and they would ask okay um, where has it been used can you please tell me but how would it work for us and there is a lot of negativity that can happen sometimes because you haven't experienced it however in europe i believe the mindset of managers and typically we always deal with some sort of top management has been very open in fact they say that sure we would like to try it why not and that's i believe the first step to change even from a university business collaboration uh, because a lot of research projects are today done between universities and uh, uh, large uh, let's say companies uh, multinational companies and therefore they are open to at least try different methodologies and see where it leads them so i believe there is one key benefit here of having a good mindset uh, and europeans typically are a little bit more open to try different things uh, as others so that's pretty much uh, the the short let's say talk that i have uh, for you all and uh, yeah, in case you need have in case you want to perhaps implement threes in, into your institutions or, or something like that um, i would still say that do not introduce it as threes uh, do it the right way you need at least two courses the first course will not even perhaps call it threes because nobody would come um, however you should probably call it something like artificial inventiveness or, or a word that that creates interest in people and just gives them a glimpse of what threes is and it, that's exactly i believe what loot did and maybe that model succeeded uh, it's a one credit course it's a very short summer school course where there's a lot of activities a lot of engagement between students and the professor uh, we try to solve inventive problems in the class uh, for example we take a piece of paper and i believe one day we had a task of you need to pass the piece of paper which is literally five by five uh, centimeter square through your entire body and please tell me how you would and we solve the problem using threes and then we kind of implement the solution so there is a lot more interactive engagement that happens in the class uh, as a team and as individual development uh, then there is this second part of the course which begins with creative imagination development just to break some mental inertia uh, of, of the students and it always is in the beginning of the course and in the end of the course uh, just to see if there has been a rise in creativity and there are some established creativity measurement models out there that, that, that you can utilize to see if there is really some sort of a skill difference and uh, well third one is about the third course I would still say that threes is too early I would rather teach OTSM uh, OTSM threes is a version of threes by the late uh, Nikolai Komenko and uh, it's called it's the full form of OTSM threes is the general theory for powerful thinking and I believe just teaching OTSM related principles or concepts opens their mind to a lot of possibilities that threes can do it kind of showcases threes potential in a way it is threes but it's at a very high abstracted level for example the ideal final result which is taught here uh, then there is the tongs model the hill model uh, the abstraction some critical thinking these type of courses help them to prepare uh, for threes and then at a last level then you could have the, the the official threes training if you were to implement it so it's a series of courses typically done in two or three uh, sections and that we believe works the best and it also creates a funnel because only the people who are genuinely interested in the course start reaching right till the advanced level so they start off with ah, artificial inventiveness looks fun and then they move on 
uh, oh yeah, this is OTSM, general theory of powerful thinking. Ah, oh, so it sounds interesting. And then they try and come in there. And then they hmm, seems like there is an even better method. And so you kind of filter the the unwanted crowd out and only the serious ones because their test is going to be the application of freeze on a real project, which takes a lot of mental preparation, a lot of work and effort. In fact, that's the most common uh, remark that we get from a lot of our uh, students that it's too time consuming, uh, it should have more credits, uh, it takes a lot of time and uh, it, it's a lot of work. And I agree. But uh, I believe that's the cost of value. The more time you spend on something, the better you get at it. And that's pretty much my my talk. I believe I'm on time. Is it Vankede sir? Am I on time? Yeah. Yes, yes, of course. Right. So, going ahead, like, uh, thank you, Nikhil, for uh, giving such a detailed uh, like view of uh, what this is and how it is uh, useful in education and that too, you have compared it with corp corporate. So, really uh, very good uh, information we have received. Now, going ahead to questions and answers, like, uh, generally our format is that once uh, this is done we uh, keep the forum open and uh, guys like participants you can just unmute yourself and ask question meanwhile i got one question uh, from one of the participants and it goes like this like what are the key differences you have observed in the approach of education with tris contents so majorly you have covered it but if you can quickly throw some light on that uh, well, I would say that uh, with the three contents, uh, there is a little bit more of a preparation. That's that's the main difference. Uh, students need to have some sort of creative imagination development sessions. They need to have some form of, uh, let's say, three principles that are that are the most common, or they need to be informed about it and maybe even practice on it. Uh, a lot more. So ideal final result, for example, it's such a simple concept to deliver our functionality without the actual component. It's it's a very simple concept, but it's really difficult to apply in, in real life if, if you were to start thinking about it. So there are these little elements here and there. And I believe um, when, when it comes to threes contents, we should not be teaching them threes and in, in a sense, just threes. And that's the main area. The boundaries of uh, threes in education need to be porous. You need to teach them different things from different perspectives. There might be some theory. There might be the actual threes part. There might be something about patterns and how patterns work, which is an extra layer of information and knowledge added on. Okay, if you come across a pattern, what do you do? How do you circumvent it? Uh, there needs to be something on, let's say, design thinking and other methods. Comparison would be great, where one team will do the same project with design thinking, one team would do the same project with threes and uh, see the results for themselves. And that just creates an interest, interactivity. Uh, so we are not limiting threes to threes, but we are also giving them an entire product life cycle execution perspective, right from problem analysis, from different perspectives, idea generation with maybe different tools like axiomatic design, morphological boxes. They are simple techniques that are still used today, scamper, uh, which is also kind of mixed around with, with a lot of different things uh, and the implementation side of things, but okay. So, okay, now you have a concept. What do we do with that? So, okay. So some part of Six Sigma, perhaps lean exactly how Professor Chachurin has kind of created the course of uh, a little bit of design for manufacturing and assembly. So keeping, keeping in mind the resources, how everything should be done. So that's all that I would like to say that three contents should not just be threes. It should be a little bit behind threes, a little bit what's ahead of threes, a little bit on what's top of threes and how it relates to maybe even strategy or innovation strategy. That's very simple and appropriate answer, uh, Nikhil. Uh, of course, threes is threes and everything is benefited by uh, the knowledge of threes. Uh, one more question seems from an academic institute. What recommendations would you give to other universities or educational institutions interested in implementing these courses and challenge-based learning frameworks in their programs? 
Uh, it's, it's a difficult one. Well, you need to first convince people that 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 it works. Yeah, and that is the most difficult thing as I of mean, now. Yeah, that's the difficult part. But uh, typically, professors, if you are a full professor, then you are allowed to create a course in the university, and that's not a problem. However, if you are anywhere perhaps lower than the professor, like an associate professor, it can get challenging because you need to have an approval from from somewhere or some some other person. On the other hand, um, one way to do it is because the challenge based framework is dependent on companies. Uh, you also need to showcase a result uh, to the company so they get attracted uh, towards trying out this kind of a method for their projects because a company will never directly come and approach you so it, it will depend on your personal networks uh, but it will also depend on some matchmaking platforms that you can make use of for example an easy way to implement real projects in your courses is through a net through a platform called Telanto. T E L A N T O. Telanto is a university business collaboration platform. Uh, it was free of cost. I think it's it, it is still free of cost until a certain extent, where they make money by basically listing a lot of challenges from company sponsors. But for universities, it's completely free. Fully free. And therefore, all you do is you sign up on Telanto. And you talk to their guys and they're like, okay, we, we will just get you projects. So it's their job to get projects from the industry to you. And then you, they just kind of make you sit together and discuss and you get a project. So sometimes you don't even need your personal networks. Uh, but if you are using your personal networks, and I believe the only way the entire academic industry is going to progress is more and more projects and real projects. The only way to do it is um, if you can have a real life, let's say, demonstration that Threes has worked for some company that you tried with. Uh, hi, Nikhil. Can I ask one question? Yeah. Nikhil, myself, Harsha. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah. Good to see you and good to know about your progress. All the best to you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you have introduced one new term which I like that is artificial inventiveness, right? And if I heard you correctly, it is a step or intermediate step before actually going into the trees or the trees uh, complexities or whatever, right? So uh, the contents of that artificial inventiveness, uh, I can say a small course, whatever, Will it be the same like we start with the system components interaction and all those things or those are slightly you can say simplified uh they are way more simplified in fact okay i'm just opening up the course that's that's there on the other page okay so here is the artificial inventiveness course that is run by uh, professor chaturin and his team okay. it's just one credit it is only for 28 hours okay it's an online course where you learn yourself uh, and all he does is introduction, the definition of function, ideal final result, function oriented search or biomimetics and con contradictions. And he just introduces them and provides some real life case studies where these were used. And that's it. It's, it's a very quick snapshot of what threes consists of. That's it. It does not okay. go into details into anything else. Okay. Uh, just a small little self-paced learning course and it's online so there is a lot of small video series that has been created maybe two or three minutes to explain a concept and some examples and then you try and apply it yourself uh, somewhere and you submit a very very tiny assignment somewhere and then you rinse and repeat so the the whole goal of artificial inventiveness is only to attract people okay to okay give them a brief so we do not go into components. We do not go into anything else. Okay. We just explain at the top surface. That's it. Okay. I mean, suppose if I want to suggest or recommend to a student, you know, who is not, who is absolutely new to trees, but before getting into trees, can I tell him that please go through this small course and if it is available on certain website, uh, can you just uh, share uh, certain check but i believe it was available on an open open university platform yeah yeah book platform but i would have to check whether it still exists and i think it can still be 
taken it was a part of a project where the european union was doing a project with uh, professor chechurin and he had built this kind of an online platform where okay. you can take this course okay. but nikhil, i can check it okay. yeah nikhil if you can uh, share that i mean if there is such a source uh, then you know it will be very helpful because whenever i talk to the students including my son as you know <laughs> who is pursuing his engineering so it will be great you know to ignite that interest and then of course then a few of them would like to get into details or whatever absolutely i see a very interesting question in the chat thank you so much host yes thank i do you. uh i i've already seen the question and there is a big difference when in a masters degree somebody has come from the industry and then he's pursuing his masters versus students who have left bachelors or finished bachelors and immediately come to masters there is a huge difference in the mental capability of uh, participants that have already worked in the companies just because they have seen how the real world works uh and they are a little bit more serious about things let's just call it that way otherwise they are uh, still students uh, at a certain extent so yes they are a little more serious and as we all say there is some part of of um tacit knowledge in threes that comes from experience i believe they carry some amount of experience that is useful for them to at least on the implementation side of things if not complete threes but yes but there is also the other let's say a dual edged sword where if you are from the industry most likely you might be having a little more psychological inertia than students who are just never been in the industry so they are a little bit uh, open minded otherwise uh, all the industry guys are just thinking too traditionally and it's difficult to break them out of their mental inertia that's the only difference i've seen so do let's word okay we also have a question uh, what's the primary scope that you can recommend threes implementation in the industry uh, is it in new products market development existing problems and analysis hmm I believe you should never start threes with new product development because the level of knowledge that you require for MPD uh, is a little bit here. I would say if you were to recommend the implementation in the industry, take a project where you have an existing problem first. It's just easier. analyze it using function analysis uh, use trimming use cause and effect chain analysis use contradiction analysis and prove the result to your senior management why because there is a big difference uh, when you talk about new product development there is a lot of stuff that you need to do before you actually begin new product development for example benchmarking now benchmarking itself is a completely different domain which is typically taught at level 3 and above uh it might be three space benchmarking there might be a lot of s curve analysis there might be a lot of things that are not covered under the basic knowledge of threes so i would say that the best path uh for you is start with an existing system where either you want to improve its functionality or reduce some sort of disadvantage that you are seeing or some problem you are having in the system and it's a big headache and nobody is able to be solve it perhaps that's the best way to do it because you have all the information and all the people and engineers available at your uh, let's say at your hands then you can move on to new product development because new product development will require a lot more knowledge which means your engineers would have to be trained at a slightly higher level and then you should maybe go to markets or adjacent markets or, or the other because you see the the strategy part of threes which is adjacent markets and finding adjacent markets is a slightly different high level algorithm again it is reverse function oriented search and it requires a lot of subject matter expertise and 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 a lot of knowledge about s curves technology forecasting road mapping pragmatic s curve analysis which is i believe you may have uh, if you want to refer to a book it is trends of engineering systems a revolution uh, uh it is published i believe two or three years ago a lot of knowledge from there and and so i wouldn't say go directly to strategy 
part of it. Adjacent markets are straight away already crossing the boundary between strategy uh, and technology. So do whatever you have first existing, maybe redu cost reduction projects also work very well. So you can take existing products, either increase functionality or reduce their cost or uh, eliminate a disadvantage. Then maybe NPD, try it a little bit more, prove the result and then go, let's say adjacent markets or even portfolio analysis or, or high level tools. Nikhil for that uh, answer. And uh, we are at the end, of, we have uh, four more minutes. If, we, if someone has uh, some quick question, we generally try to start sharp at four and end at five. So maybe I'll jump in with a quick question. Uh, hi, Nikhil, very nice to see you Hello. and hear you. I have a very short question to you because we also implemented trees at Wrocław University of Science and Technology, but we did it dedicated for PhD students and we have encouraged them to come to our course by selling trees as a helper in your academic research. And do you have any experience in applying trees to solve research problems? Oh, it's a really tricky one. Okay. Uh, the answer is yes and no. Uh, it's, it's a very three related answer. It can be yes and no. Uh, the answer is yes, because a lot of times in academic research, me, myself, at least on a personal level, I get stuck. And then the only way to move forward is to find a solution to that problem. Like, okay, where am I going to get the data from? Or some part of my methodology is just impossible to do. And then what do I do? So I wouldn't say that the application of threes was done formally uh, for, for research purposes, at least because I am dealing with innovation management related research. Uh, however, uh, one of my friends who was in the department of mechanical engineering, she's working on cardboards and thermoforming methods for cardboards. She does a lot of design of experiments on the machine, sees the results and moves forward. And once we were talking and she gave us this problem that, you know what, we have some problem of uh, dimensional stability for cardboards or unlaminated cardboards in a thermoforming process. I'm like, okay. So we were talking, 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 and immediately, maybe in the back of my head, there was some simple function model, simple cause and effect chain, and maybe a simple contradiction. Why don't you try this? And then she was like, okay, sure. And then it, it somehow worked. And I believe uh, threes for research, for technical uh, research, if you're in a technical field like engineering, or maybe even software, uh, at, at some extent it does, it helps a lot uh, because most of my mechanical engineering friends currently, unfortunately, do not have uh, a clear capability to create cause and effect chains and then do the design of experiments. It's the other way around. They are doing experiments blindly like a trial and error uh, model and then trying to see whether we have results, which is minus 20% and then they report it in their paper and then maybe plus 10%. Oh, wow, something worked. And then they will try and find out why it worked. And that's technically the wrong approach. Uh, it should be the other way around. We're trying to reduce trial and error. So I believe, yes, in technical sciences, if your research and PhD is in those topics, then 100%, yes, uh, threes can help you a lot, even in material sciences. Um, but in my case, in, in innovation management and a little bit of managerial domains, um, I cannot formally apply threes as it is. I've tried to. Uh, at a certain extent, but um, it's it's difficult. So sometimes it, it happens naturally because threes does, the more you practice, it, it trains something in your brain. Maybe even applying a reese, it works very well and creates some powerful logic. And this logic, it comes from threes somewhere, but I, I don't formally apply threes in at least managerial related research yet. But the ability to question things in, in the managerial domain, using threes improves considerably. So that's something that I've seen. Uh, a lot of people ask better questions, to the point questions, and half of the time, um, I have seen that many people are taught to read research papers first. So when we, when we conduct a literature review, 
we read research papers, we try to get their findings, and then we try and relate their findings together to, to form some sort of an understanding. When I used, and, and when I started writing research papers, it was the other way around. Um, I theorized what should be the direction of research in this case. And when I read the abstract, I usually come to know what would be in the research and what would be the possible solution that this research offers. And when I check it, nine to eight times out of 10, I found that, ah, seems like the direction was correct. And then, so you see, you're kind of inventing research and then just confirming whether this has been done by this guy and you find it out. So it's kind of this deductive approach to, to research, which I've noticed, but that's very subjective according to the knowledge of these, but yes, it can definitely help in technical research and sciences. Perfect. Thank you very much for your insight. I have very similar experience, so I'm glad it's the same from your side. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Mikhil. Uh, any other quick question? Meanwhile, someone can just populate his, his or her question. I would like to just tell that we are very soon means next uh, uh, month, last Friday, we are going to have a session by um, Olga Krasinek, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'll uh, try to uh, pronounce it again, Olga Krasinekova. And uh, fortunately, she is also one of the participants today, which I could see. So she would be like, she's a vice president of Matri's official on uh, in education. And she's founder of Linguatica Online School of Tris for Kids, one of its kind. And uh, her work is on boosting kids' creativity with Tris tools. So uh, like we say that kids are naturally creative, but what if we tell you that creativity is a skill that can be fine tuned and amplified? So say, stay tuned. Uh, next month, again, on the, the last Friday, as usual, 4 p.m., 29th of September, Olga would be here, and she will be sharing her experiences and that too with kids. And so I feel everyone uh, have a kid in themselves, and uh, most of us have kids. So it is very important that we should attend this uh, session. So uh, is is there any quick question or uh, we will close it for the day? And if you have any more questions, feel free to post it on info at trisassociation.org. And we will pass on these questions to Nikhil. And on his behalf, I promise that uh, we will get all the answers of your questions. So thank you, Nikhil, once again. Thank you, Olga, and all the dear participants for joining at uh, like uh, at times, maybe odd, odd time, because uh, most of the participants today are international. So thanks for being here and uh, looking forward for a similar cooperation for all of you. Any final concluding remark from uh, Nikhil? Uh, no, that's that's pretty much it. Um, that's that's all that I have to say. Rest, keep doing research, keep working, keep pushing. Yeah. So participants, uh, we'll close for the day. Thanks for joining. Have a great day ahead. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, Sandeep sir. Bye. Thank you, Arshaji.